All right, everybody. Sorry about the uh, late start and the the technical difficulty. Sometimes these things just happen. Nature of the profession. Uh, I'm Tim McLilly, and uh, welcome to the Mobile First, Cloud First User Group at DC. Um, this is a user group that focuses on things like Office 365, uh, Azure, CRM Online, Project Online, uh, anything to do with uh, cloud-based technologies pretty much centered around the, the Microsoft technology stack. And tonight's an example of, of one of those features. We're going to talk about O365 or Office 365 and some of the adoption challenges that folks have and some ways to um, you know, overcome those. And we've got uh, Stephanie Butler, who's an, uh, an Office Productivity Specialist uh, from the Platform Group. She's going to talk to us this evening. And also we've got a, a, another Microsoft partner, Desiree Voigt from Brainstorm. And Brainstorm can uh, she'll be able to talk about what Brainstorm does, but they have some really cool uh, resources, uh, training materials to get people spun up. Um, I'm going to go ahead and I believe I've hit record. Yep, I've already hit record. Thank goodness. I usually have a slide that says, hey, Tim, don't forget to hit record. Um, <laughs> so, But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hand the uh, control over to, to Stephanie because she's got the, the slides kind of pre-cached. Uh, so it'll make everything a little bit smoother. So I'm going to make Stephanie uh, a presenter, and I'll finish presenting uh, my slides, which are just two or three, two or three painless slides. So take it away, Stephanie. All right. Fingers see, crossed. Let's see if it comes over. Yes. It's, um... I'm going to hit stop presenting on my side, which I think means I stop presenting my slides. Mm-hmm. You should soon be seeing my screen. Yeah. Slowly but surely. No, not yet, but I'm sure it'll pop up here in just a sec. Is it saying it's loading at all? No. Maybe Not yet, but there's been a lag every time um, you guys have passed presentation rights back and forth. Yeah. Let's try it again. Let's say present. I see it's connecting. I'm just going to pause here. Oh, there it's we go. loading now. Woohoo! All right. So let's see if we can sneak over here. Excellent. All right. And it's got the timing thing again, Tim, so talk fast, because if it does advance, <laughs> come, right, come right back to this slide. Let's hope it's only uh, on the Sorry. Slide. So okay. tonight, we, t thank you, and I'll, I'll talk really fast, because I think i got 30 seconds per slide. So while this is moving through, we've got uh, some good events coming up. This is part of a first night of a five-part series, uh, last Wednesday of each month. Uh, at 7 o'clock, we'll be here. We'll also record all these sessions, too, and post them on our YouTube channel. Information about the sessions and the YouTube channel are there on our Meetup site. Stephanie's so patient. <laughs> She's clicking back for me. Um, also, we've got our IT Pro Camp and Cloud Summit coming up on May 14th. That's an in-person event in Chevy Chase. Um, it'll be our third uh, event in a row. We did one in 2014, 2015 coming up in 2016 also did two in Jacksonville Florida uh, three or four years ago anywho we get about 250 plus people at these events uh, with Microsoft partners and Microsoft consultants and um, folks out in the community so it's 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 a uh, it's always a fun time um, we've also got a project management series coming up starting at the end of March that's a three-part series on MS project and project online and then we'll also have some follow-up to Stephanie's session around Office 365 groups, and then we're going to also build in sessions around um, uh, Azure Compute Network and Storage, and just a, a general forum for updating uh, the community with key and significant updates from Azure. The slides and materials from this session are going to be on the Meetup site, and of course I'll email this information to everybody after the session's over. So without further ado, I'm going to hand it over to uh, one of our uh, Microsoft partners from Brainstorm, uh, Desiree Voigt. Uh, Desiree will be able to talk to us a little bit about what Brainstorm does and, and how they kind of fit in with this series and what Stephanie's going to talk about. So without further ado, Desiree Voigt. Thanks so much, Timothy. 
Um, uh, so I just wanted to quickly kind of identify, um, again, we are a Microsoft partner as well. We focus on end user readiness around um, both adoption and deployment. Um, the important thing is to help you guys understand why adoption is so important. And I know I know uh, the series is going to focus on that and helping you understand kind of the real ramifications of it. But if you were to look at uh, migration and deployment based on user productivity, which is what we're kind of taking a peek at here, um, obviously there is an associated dip in productivity that's going to happen. Um, uh, based on different factors like what an organization is migrating from and to what's new, how soon has it been or how recent was the last migration, that dip in productivity can can obviously vary. Um, so obviously our goal and what we've been doing for the last 20 years is to work to mitigate that dip in productivity. Um, so helping organizations from an end user readiness perspective, um, uh, you know, really kind of um, break down the barriers, get uh, users ready. With Office 365, um, obviously this dip in productivity can be somewhat compounded um, uh, because there's uh, new releases and, and updates coming continually. And that's, that's the great part about Office 365, right? You have the latest and greatest at any given moment. Um, but what we don't want to do is, uh, you notice here kind of the, the, the main line across the, the bar uh, chart here is a status quo. What we don't want is to have your users move from point A to point B, uh, so a previous software to Office 365, using it the exact same way. Stephanie, you can uh, actually go ahead and advance here uh, two times. Um, this is actually what Brainstorm specializes in. So um, a user who maybe has been on Outlook or uh, in Office, go ahead one more time. Um, we want to make sure that they don't just move from one version to the next and leverage it in the exact same way, which is quite typical. Uh, we really want to make sure that they are uh, leveraging the full potential of the collaboration suite, um, you know, uh, all the different features and functionality that make Office 365 uh, so time-saving, productivity rich. So that's what Brainstorm does. Um, we've been helping organizations do this, like I said, for 20 years, um, not just helping with the deployment, but helping organizations get past. Um, go ahead and, and uh, hit it one more time, Stephanie. Uh, one way in which we do this, and this is actually something that's available right now to um, all Microsoft customers, um, so if any of you within your organization um, are currently in charge of or working on um, any component of a deployment of an Office 365 workload, so any piece of the puzzle, there is a program right now, it's funded by Microsoft, it's available again to all Office 365 customers. And it basically is available company-wide. So regardless of how small or large your company is, um, these resources will be deployed at no cost um, for 90 days. And the, the resources primarily include everything from communication content, um, which we personally feel is one of the most important pieces of the puzzle. Um, so having a human resource, it's called a client success manager, to provide you with a communication plan, templates, um, uh, all specific to your organization, um, you know, thousands of two to four minute on-demand video clips, um, live instructor-led webinars. Um, it's a pretty robust offering that obviously warrants a deeper discussion. But the, the most important takeaway, uh, we want you guys to know that this is a free program, again, to all Officer 65 customers. Um, and so there's some contact information on here. Uh, if you'd like to learn more about how Brainstorm can help um, provide some of these free resources, um, you know, the, the monthly webinars, communication content, please feel free to reach out. Uh, we can review the program in more detail, uh, tell you how we can get you enrolled um, and, and kind of get things started. This program is good, um, essentially, uh, you have to kind of um, initially express interest or kind of opt in by June, and then the 90 days just have to be consumed by the end of year. So we have some time here to, uh, to really kind of reap the benefits of the program. Any questions about the program? Okay, great. If you guys have any, please feel free to reach out. Um, and like I said, happy to review this on a on a one on one basis. Set aside thirty minutes to talk through uh, our, our our program here. Sure, and thanks. We, I know I've got one of my customers uh, lined up uh, and enrolled in the brainstorm program right now. We're actually going to work with one of your internal colleagues to kind of map out 
uh, mm -hmm. how to best use your resources for adoption. So we're, we're looking forward to it. Yeah, very good. Uh, George, I, I see your question here. Um, I don't want to take too much time from Stephanie. Um, if if a few years back uh, the program has only been in place for, this is its second year, um, Quick Help itself has actually changed um, uh, uh, dramatically in the last 12 months, um, uh, most, uh, most dramatically around kind of the live webinars, the ability to assign content so we can now proactively push content out to the users. Um, it used to be all on demand. Um, it's also moving in the way of a traditional LMS. There's help desk training included. So that the product offering continues to grow, and, and I'd, I'd be happy to review that with you and talk about what's different now and, and how it's grown. Okay, very good. Uh, I think that's it. Stephanie, back to you. Wonderful. Thank you, Desiree. And <clears throat> I can't reiterate enough. You'll learn a little bit more about me here in the next couple slides. But uh, I am a m former Microsoft employee, and I am one who uh, has introduced customers like yourself to the uh, Quick Help um, offering from Brainstorm. And it's absolutely worth the investment of time hearing about that offer and what they can help um, bring to your adoption journey. So thank you so much for sharing that information, Desiree. So hi, everyone. Um, thank you again for your patience. Uh, and thank you, more importantly, for just dedicating some time on a, in the middle of the week on a weeknight, uh, your family time. We do take that. Um, uh, we don't take that lightly. And uh, we just appreciate you joining the conversation. We happen to think that it's a very timely, important conversation um, about Microsoft adoption uh, of Office 365 and Fast Track and the Fast Track Center, and really just telling that story in a very simple way to help you and your uh, colleagues, your customers, your partners get, you know, clarity on, you know, what does Microsoft uh, mean when they mean adoption, when they say adoption? And then, you know, they've invested in Fast Track. What exactly is Fast Track? And how do I get uh, connected to Fast Track to help me escalate my adoption journey? And so that's what we're going to talk about today. As you can see, we've done some quick brief introductions with Tim and, and Desiree. But for the remainder of the time, we're just going to talk uh, about what Office 365 and adoption means and um, what Fast Track is, and then the differences between Fast Track and the Fast Track Center, and then close the conversation with some next steps and Q&A. Uh, before I dive in, here are my social channels. I always like to share this slide because oftentimes people want to have conversations while we're having the main conversation, either on your Twitter channels or on your Facebook channels. Um, these are all the ways that we can engage during and after the conversation today. Um, I'll share these in the, the follow-up note that Tim will send to the group. Uh, but when you do talk about the conversation throughout the series, we'd love if you would pick up that hashtag there at the bottom so we can track these conversations. Um, MFCF underscore DC underscore Office 365. And Tim, I can't see the chat window, so please feel free to interrupt me while I'm going through this slide. You bet. I mean, through the, the presentation. So again, I'm Stephanie Butler. I'm the managing partner with the Platform Group. Um, what is the Platform Group, and who are we? What do we do? Um, we're At our core, we're an adoption and change management practice. Um, we are pro -sci licensed to deliver change based on the ADCAR methodology, which is very familiar to maybe some of you. Others may be using other methodologies. but um, we have followed the Microsoft uh, methodology of really balancing our change management um, recommendations and proposals around the ProSci ad car method. Um, we're well suited to lead adoption and usage workshops with customers who are uh, integrating Office 365 into the enterprise. We can complete adoption and readiness assessments and surveys, define sustainable su success metrics and measurements, deliver communications and training plans, or help recommend uh, partners like Brainstorm to come into um, your, 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 your strategy and, and help you do that. And we also serve as a Microsoft and customer stakeholder liaison, as well as a Fast Track Center liaison. When I say we, that's a team of folks who actually come on site or remote uh, as a part of an adoption and change management engagement. And so we're really just that stakeholder on the ground to help you navigate the adoption journey. A little bit about me. I've got um, 
about 17 years of combined experience in corporate communications, human resources, and change management. I love people. I love helping people realize those aha moments and the light bulbs to go off in their minds when it comes to engagement and, um, and, and change management. I'm a former Microsoft Office 365 and Yammer customer success manager. And um, I was part of the team that was previously with Microsoft up until January, and then just hopped right in to continue to do what I love, just more on a consultative basis over the last couple of months. In reality, the platform is a bit long, a bit older than that, but we've just rebranded ourselves to respond to this demand in the market right now. I'm a natural dot connector. I like to connect dots. I like to connect people and ideas. And so that's a big part of why I'm passionate about what we can do with customers like yourselves and bringing you closer to information like Fast Track and what it can do to help you in your journey. And finally, I'm an avid storyteller. I love Walt Disney. And in the next um, webinar and uh, the, at the Define the Vision stage, I'll talk a little bit more about Walt Disney and how I think his visionary approach really applies when you think about beginning your adoption journey. So what does, okay, okay, yeah, okay. When we talk about Microsoft Office 365 and adoption, Microsoft believes that a successful adoption approach hinges on four stages. One, setting the vision and identifying the business scenarios that sort of uh, um, manifest that vision. We're just going to touch on these today. These are not the focus of today's presentation, but I just want to touch on each one to set the context. At stage two, you're looking at prioritizing the solutions that you've identified help you um, uh, uh, manifest those business scenarios. And then that's the stage where you begin to create an adoption plan that encompasses those solutions and those scenarios. At phase three, now that you've got your plan in place, you want to start thinking about committing resources, on the ground resources to begin to execute on that adoption plan, but also resources that help you tell your story. So marketing and communication resources, those are also a part of that stage three. And then finally, stage four. There was a phrase we used as customer success managers called aim, fire, and adjust. And the adjust stage is what you see here in stage four. It's that measure, share success, and iterate, right? Measure what you identified in the beginning as your success factors. Find out, have they been effective? Do we need to adjust them? And then adjust and do it all over again. And so those are the four stages that we're going to be walking through um, over the next uh, four months during this webinar. Um, but to get us, and that's what this slide really is talking about, throughout this series, we're going to connect the dots. So in between each of those um, uh, uh, core sort of stages, you see the details here of what, what is involved at each stage. So at the discover stage, what does that look like? Identifying key stakeholders, um, engaging executive sponsors, setting the vision. Again, I mentioned Walt Disney, setting the vision at the very beginning of your journey, and then identifying those core business scenarios that map back to that umbrella vision. At the prioritize solutions and create an adoption plan stage, again, you're going to engage champions, you're going to define and prioritize those solutions, and you're going to execute on that adoption plan. The nice thing, and I won't go through each of these, but the nice thing that you see here is that each of those steps has a resource that Microsoft has already pre-created um, for you to help manage at each of those stages. And that's the beautiful thing about Fast Track and why we're having this conversation is because a lot of customers don't know the materials and resources that are already out there to help you be successful, even without um, engaging uh, a partner. Ultimately, when you think about how you navigate your adoption journey, I've, I've included this slide to give you an idea of what your cradle to grave plan ultimately could look like. It looks like, in essence, a 12-week pre and post-launch project. 
And at each of those weeks, there are recommended um, actions that you and your team would take um, to help you navigate that adoption journey. Uh, and Fast Track absolutely has all the resources that you need to help you at each, uh, each phase of this project plan. And so this is just a snapshot to give you an idea of, you know, the timeline that it can take for you to execute a successful adoption plan, plan from pilot to post. And customer, I mean, partners like myself and like Brainstorm um, absolutely come alongside you to help you execute um, at various stages of, uh, uh, across this plan. So we've, we're here really to talk about Fast Track. What is Fast Track? And I'm going to start with a slide, but then I'm actually going to take you into the Fast Track um, site as well. So Fast Track is Microsoft's customer success service. In essence, it helps you move to Office 365 smoothly and with confidence while realizing and delivering business value faster. With Fast Track, you can plan for successful rollout and onboard new users and capabilities at your own pace. And finally, Fast Track consists of best practices, tools, resources, as I mentioned in the previous slide, and personalized remote assistance that are available to you either through the web, web experience or through the Fast Track Center. So I'm going to go there right now and show you. Let's go to. Okay. Challenging part is I need to be able to see. There we go. Okay. So what is Fast Track? So I've come here to, let me type this in, fasttrack.office.com is the web address. And when you come to fasttrack.office.com, this is the front page that you'll see. And the reason why, a big reason why I have this conversation is sometimes this front page can be a bit overwhelming. So we're going to sort of pick apart the pieces that are most important for you to, to, to key in on to get started. Hey, Stephanie. Yes. Got a, got a question. What size organization it would, would that 12-week shot, that 12-week project plan be designed for in terms of, I guess, the amount of enabled seats? Oh, it's a good question. I mean, that 12-week time frame, it can be for any size organization. I mean, the methodology behind it is really just to give you milestones on when to deliver what and why. So if we go back, actually, to that project plan, let's just go back to it and have a look at some of the stages. Um, for example, if you're a larger organization, a larger enterprise, you may need the lead time right, to, um, uh, to execute on readiness for your technical deployment. You may need the lead time to engage a substantial number of champions to help you evangelize this across the enterprise. You may need that lead time to help build out your business scenarios for different divisions, different business units, different um, functional units. But let's say you're a smaller business. Let's say you're a nonprofit or you're just a, a smaller, um, you know, maybe less than 100, couple hundred employees. You absolutely can condense that 12 week time frame into a, a more manageable time frame for you. I can tell you right now, it really just hinges on the number of resources you have on your implementation team. If you've got a sort of an all hands on deck approach, you can do this even in larger enterprises much quick, much more quickly than 12 weeks. But that 12 weeks is really just a, a, a place marker to say, you know, if you're doing this right at a steady pace, 12 weeks is a fair amount of time for you to execute on your adoption plan. Does that answer your question? Looks like it does. Excellent. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> you're welcome. Okay. So when we come back here to the Fast Track um, portal, fasttrack.office.com, you see four stages here. And these four stages are a little bit different than the four actual stages of adoption. These are actually the four stages of um, engaging with the Fast Track um, portal and the Fast Track Center. Um, and then at each phase, envision, onboard, drive adoption, manage, 
you can go into each of those sections and I won't go through the entire portal today, but it will guide you. So if I click on here in Envision, it will guide you on what you should be doing at the Envision, Envisioning stage of your journey, right? They already deliver pre-populated business scenarios for you to start building your use cases around. Get it done from anywhere in a small video on that. Um, I mean, as you can see here, we call this terminology sticky themes because when you're talking to end users, end users don't necessarily remember Skype for Business, Exchange Online, SharePoint, but what they do remember is stay productive on the go, work like a network, get, you know, store, save and store your files um, seamlessly, work together seamlessly. They, they remember sticky themes because sticky themes are what really drive value, right? Why should I invest in learning more about this particular technology? And so when you go into the envisioning stage, they've got pre-baked information that you can use from day one. Same thing with onboard, right? You come to Fast Track Center and they give you all the information that you need to know if you're a business that's um, under 50 people, here are the steps you can take to begin to onboard your technology. If you've got 50 or more people, oh, I had them on different screens, that's under 50. And then if you've got 50 or more, here are the steps you take. Now, this is starting to mention Fast Track Center, and I don't want to get ahead of us just yet because that's the next part of this conversation. But as you can see here, at each stage, Microsoft has invested in empowering you to self-direct your adoption journey. Now, where has this been applicable where someone has used Fast Track? A customer I've worked with previously has used Fast Track Center. Well, I can tell you right now, smaller smaller teams, people with smaller integration teams who don't have a lot of resources available to them have found value in being able to come here to the Fast Track site, pick up things like resources, um, guides, plans, and this just executing using that information within their team. Again, they identify maybe a project manager for that smaller team, and that person is responsible for making all of this information available to them in an easy to access way, okay? So that's when I've found the Fast Track site to be effective. I've also found the Fast Track site to be effective when working directly with business unit stakeholders. So corporate communications, for example, doesn't have to wait for IT to empower them with documentation for their communications campaign. They can come right here to the Fast Track Center and to the resources section and get everything they need to build out their communication strategy. They can pull teaser videos right here. They can pull the communication guide and build their editorial around that. And then if they're gonna launch some sort of uh, training and development portal, they can pull that information from here as well. And they're empowered to do that um, at their own pace. They don't have to wait for another unit uh, to make that information available to them. Okay, and so that's another benefit of having access to the Fast Track Center. And then finally, when you think about the last step there, manage, <clears throat> you can do it as an admin and as a, as a business stakeholder. You know, admins can come here for the resource center. If you're executing change management internally, you can come here for more information or to engage a partner like myself, like uh, Brainstorm or Microsoft Services. And then if you're, again, an admin, you've got the service management toolkit made available to you. So they just have really made this a very efficient self-service portal for customers of any size. Now, if you want that more dedicated um, support, then we're talking about engaging with the Microsoft Fast Track Center. Let me pause there really quickly and ask Tim, are there any questions in the window right now? Looks so far so good, all clear. Okay, wonderful. So if you want more dedicated support, Microsoft 
expounds on just making the fast track site and portal available to you and now has what they're calling the fast track center and what the fast track center does is they work with you to assess remediate enable and migrate your eligible o365 services and pre previously it was only available to customers who had 150 um, seats um, but now it's available to customers with 50 seats and above, which is really good news for a lot of customers. Um, those seats, at least 50 seats of O365, either enterprise or business SKUs, as well as paid government SKUs, kiosk SKUs, and nonprofit SKUs. What is the Fast Track Center? It's a team of hundreds of engineers or Fast Track architects who are around the globe and they're committed to providing IT professionals and partners with a successful Office 365 experience. Those fast track engineers will provide you with a remote and personalized assistance to help you prepare for your technical environment and ensure a smooth onboarding and migration experience. So let's go there to the fast track um, and, and talk a little bit about some of the things that Fast Track Center can help you do as a customer. Uh, there. Okay, so let, let me pause here. So I've given you the overview, but if you want to learn more about the actual details of what's behind the Fast Track Center, you can come here to this site. Again, you're at fasttrack.microsoft.com, and way too much information to share in this hour, but they make a very nice service description available to you so that you can dig into the details of what exactly Fast Track Center can do for you. And remember, that's at no additional cost to you as a customer. That's included with what you paid um, for those licenses. This is a, a service that's included for you, an out-of-the-box um, consumption or adoption service, if you will. Okay? So you want to come here and see the details of what that service actually looks like. What does an engagement with the Fast Track Center look like? What well, step one, you'll kick off onboarding to Office 365 within 30 days of that purchase. Okay. You can also alternatively request assistance, uh, assistance through your O365 admin center um, if you don't want to wait for Microsoft uh, Fast Track Center to contact you. Um, at step two, they'll assess your environment. Okay. So you'll work with that. A Fast Track engineer will be assigned to you as well as a fast track manager who'll be the liaison internally. Um, and the, between the two of them, they'll work to set schedule time to assess your environment. And at stage three, they'll remediate any issues. So your fast track engineer will provide you with that checklist um, and help you remediate any issues. And then at the final stage, they'll enable those core capabilities. Now there's again, a whole lot behind this uh, engagement that you'll want to come to this website and get the specifics on. But having worked with the Fast Track Center um, as a, a customer success manager for Microsoft, I can tell you, and I actually am one of a, a small core group of people who trained the Fast Track manager, so I'm very familiar with the conversation and the engagement that you'll have. And I just really value the fact that Microsoft has invested in holding customers' hands through these early steps. And if you're working with a partner, the really nice thing about the, the remediate any issue stage is that fast track will surface those things that are within scope and without a scope. So if it's something that fast track can't do for you at the remediate stage, they've at least surfaced the things that your partner can then run with, which has made it a lot easier for your partner. So that's another thing that I really like um, about working with the fast track center. Um, some fast track Q&A really quickly because I want to leave I want to leave room for questions. Um, let's go here. Here are some of the more common questions that I've seen. You can click on that link at your own time. Visit that link to get more in depth on fast track FAQ. But one of the questions I've heard: Will Microsoft migrate customer data as a part of onboarding? The answer is yes, and they've been doing it as of July 1st of 2015. Um, so as of July 1st, the mail migration is included as a part of the service benefit. Additional data migration services will be made available shortly. Follow Microsoft's roadmap at roadmap.office.com to learn more. And they do 
so we keep that roadmap up to date. So you would want to bookmark that roadmap. I know I, I have that bookmarked as well. How long is the typical onboarding and migration engagement? And that does depend on the customer and their partner scheduling needs and their environment. However, an average onboarding assistance will last roughly four to six weeks, and Microsoft will stay engaged with the customer and partner until all eligible applications, Exchange, SharePoint, Skype for Business, Office Pro Plus, and Yammer are provisioned and ready to use. And Stephanie, just just to add into this point, um, there's also the Velocity Migration Program for things like Exchange Mailboxes, where uh, a customer could apply to work with the Fast Track Velocity Migration Team and get, you know, like a thousand mailboxes a night moved over if they are eligible and have their infrastructure ready. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, that's a great point, Tim. Are the onboarding and migration services retroactive? Now, this was a question I got a lot from the customers I was working with because um, the offering didn't come out until after they had already bought their licenses. The good news is the fast track onboarding, migration, and adoption planning services can be used at any time and are available to any customer that, that purchase um, eligible SKUs at uh, uh, 50 or above the licenses for those SKUs. So the answer is yes. If you previously bought your Office 365 SKUs in 2015 um, and but didn't know about Fast Track or weren't previously connected to Fast Track, you're absolutely eligible for the service. You'll simply just log in, sign in, and request assistance. Or again, you can request that assistance from your Office 365 admin center. Hey, Steph, we got a question in the window uh, from George. Uh, will they move? Uh, customer data for competitive platforms, I'm assuming like Lotus Notes or, or um, well, that's the other, or Google, uh, or does this only work for Microsoft on-prem solutions? Wonderful question, George. You actually got to my last um, main slide. Um, you know, the answer, I'll be, I'll, be, I'll be honest, I don't know every competitive platform that they will migrate from. But I do know that I've worked with customers. They have moved from Lotus Notes over to Office 365 previously. And then, as you can see from the screen here, um, one of the, the more recent customer success stories for Fast Track is uh, the International School of Stuttgart in Germany moved from Google to Office 365 in three weeks by using Microsoft Fast Track. And that's just the beginning. And I've put the link there. So it's for you to get um, closer to that story. I'll also uh, give it to Tim to share with you as a follow-up. But the, the short answer is yes. Um, you could work with your Fast Track uh, manager to find out which competitive platforms they can migrate over from. Okay. Excellent. Wonderful. There was just one last question here about those of you who are either planning to or have already purchased an E5 SKU, the Fast Track Center has expanded their core enablement of new Skype for Business capabilities in the E5 plan. Um, and that will also include onboarding guidance for the PSTN conferencing and all the, the capabilities you see listed there. Um, um, you can absolutely talk to your Fast Track manager about the extent of that support in the E5 SKU, but absolutely, Microsoft Fast Track is uh, the Microsoft Fast Track Center is positioned to support um, the E5 uh, plan and SKUs. Okay. So, what are the next steps that you want to think about? They're very simple. Right. To engage with the Fast Track Center, again, I can't reiterate this enough. You can ask for help from the Admin Center or, again, make the request from the Fast Track site by signing in at fasttrack.office.com. And just to point that out, here's the sign in. So when you come to fasttrack.office.com, you'll see the option to sign in right here. And you'll just be invited to enter your information. You have to use a work or school account, obviously. Um, uh, and, and, and know your organizational ID. But it's as simple as signing in right there, and then you'll see a very user-friendly screen that walks you through how to begin to request help and engage your Fast Track Manager. That concludes 
today's conversation. Again, it's very high level. It's really just to set the context for the next four sessions. And we really, really will deep dive into each of those phases, the, the defining your vision, the planning, the engage, and then the, and then the manage, um, manage and measure stage. And I'm looking forward to that because that's really where we start to peel back the layers on your plans and on your customers' um, plans if you're a partner yeah. on the call. Um, so yeah, thank you. Are there any questions um, that I haven't covered in today's call that you want to broach on? Or uh, Tim, any that come to mind on your end? Uh, there's one question here from George. Um, uh, George is a friend of mine. He's he's a uh, Asia. Uh, uh, so will they move from uh, Dropbox for OneDrive as well? Mm. I can I can take a swag at that. Okay, but, thank you. Uh, more around the the MCS side or the consulting services side. So we're using Fast Track engineers at one customer, and they're doing the mailbox migration. Well, we're also using, we've introduced Fast Track and fa the Fast Track engineer team, actually it's the same team, to take a look at their, the customer's Dropbox, uh, current Dropbox footprint, as well as some of their on-prem file storage. And the Fast Track team can kind of do like the preparational piece, the pre-flight stuff, uh, but they've, but the customer's already engaged with our enterprise architecture group to do a data management strategy engagement. So the, in my case, for that question, or as it applies to that question, we're doing uh, sort of like an M, uh, consulting services data move from Dropbox onto OneDrive. Convoluted response to the to George's question. <laughs> no, but it's helpful, and I'm glad that Microsoft Fast Track is is helping in that space, especially with Dropbox um, being one of those competitor products, right? That enterprises um, are using, maybe not using from a from a strategic standpoint, but their end users have been using and adopting it, mm -hmm. and so now they want a strategy in place to sort of corral corral the cats and and have one central ecosystem with Office 365. So it's in, it's a, it's to our benefit to help customers uh, migrate data from those competitor products. So I'm glad we are. Yeah, absolutely. Let's the customer be more agile. I'll let them know there's a Microsoft services side. There's a Microsoft, um, you know, a framework that you can use. Because my customer, I had, well, one customer thought that we were just sending him a bunch of links. So I sat down with, uh, uh, the the customer and kind of step them through the fast track framework, and now mm -hmm. they're true believers, fully engaged, you know, fast track touch points, uh, in must in multiple areas at the at the customer site, and we're just excited about being able to use the fast track framework and the fast track center for resources. I agree. I mean, not every customer has a, a great resource like UT. Oh, and thank you. Very much. <laughs> Um, and so that's where the platform group um, is well suited, like like most partners. Now I can say candidly that there are some partners who are very deployment and technical focused, and that's and that's wonderful. But they may not have as strong a skill set in the adoption and change management space. And so that's where the platform group would be well suited is to come and be like a Tim to you um, and help you really navigate the adoption side of your integration um, into your enterprise. So after today and after the series, we'd absolutely love to even have just a, a conversation with you about your need and to see if there's any opportunity for us to help. So with that. Um, and as we move through this series, I'm sure you'll get a lot of feedback in that regard because a lot of people, a lot of organizations simply get stuck. They do. Where are we right now? Help us get out of this. Help us move forward. Um, and help us make the most out of our Office 365 investment. They do. They. I like how you use that word stuck. They get stuck. Um, and I'm going to be candid. Oftentimes where things get stuck is in IT. And IT is not a dirty word. <laughs> it's not a bad word at all. We love IT. Um, but one thing that I really try to do is to coach um, IT stakeholders to invite their colleagues in the business, like uh, corporate communications, like human resources, mm -hmm. like operation, right? I know that's a new space, um, but we like I like to consider it making IT their hero, 
right? Because they've got pain points, they've got challenges, and when you start introducing new technology, they immediately want to know, how is this new technology going to make my life easier instead of complicating an already complicated situation? And the only way that you're going to really get them to invest in that new technology is for them to find value in it. Mm -hmm. And so we help IT tell a value story to the business. You know, why should you, you know, why can, how, why can we make it easier for you, HR, or a communication stakeholder, to stay productive on the go, to be able to communicate with and to our employees um, in more effective, efficient, consumable ways using Office 365. Those are the beginning conversations that help you build those business scenarios and those use cases. And that's where someone in the adoption and change management space, like the platform group, can help you get unstuck. So yeah, you're going to see a lot of that throughout this series. And um, we're just really excited to be a part of the conversation. And we're so thankful that Tim invited us to, to be a part of this, um, a part of this movement with them with the customers there um, uh, along the Eastern Seaboard. <laughs> Excellent. And we'll have uh, we'll have more customers from within the Mid-Atlantic District as well as more folks from the public community kind of joining in, I'm sure. And we'll also drive people toward our one our one note <laughs> our uh, YouTube channel. There's one note YouTube. There's all these different little cutesy words. We'll drive people to the, uh, the recorded content because we'll we will record or this is being recorded, so it'll be up on YouTube. That's great. What you said, can, can I put you on? Can I put you on the spot? Would you mind bringing up the Meetup.com Mobile First Cloud First site just for half a second, and then I'll I'll, clo I'll close with that. I should have mentioned that earlier, but I was thinking about my I was looking at my slides and the weird timer thing. And uh, there we go. Let's, um, there we go. Do we want to go to the main page, the home page, Tim? Sure. Okay. Thank you there very much go. for doing that. Yes. If we can scroll and just take a, well, let's see, we'll just take a look at one of these meetings here. So, like I said, folks, we've got a series going on. This is step. This is a, a session one of a five-part series. We'll record all of them, and we'll also remind folks about where the recording is going to be located. Uh, Stephanie will send I, send the files, and we'll also have a copy of Desiree's material from Brainstorm. So they'll be out in the files section of our Meetup portal, and it'll it's it's the basic URL here. It's meetup.com, mobile first, cloud first, DC, you know, forward slash files. And that's where we'll store the files from tonight. And then there's our YouTube channel presented right there along the left side of the, the page. So that's where all this good content's going to be stored in our files area for slides and then in our YouTube channel for the recorded presentation. Well, Desiree and Stephanie, thank you for a great presentation, and thank you for uh, folks for dialing in, Daniel, George, and Jennifer. We appreciated uh, your, your time and patience. We know it's cold. I know in the D.C. area right now, it is blasting <laughs> cold wind. I think the wind chill is, I don't know. I saw a penguin walk by my house. Uh, you know, <laughs> It's just cold. It's like 20 degrees. I'm mad. I went to Baltimore earlier today for a meeting, and the meeting was right down by the water. So oh, I got a little extra, little extra kiss from Mother Nature. So um, <laughs> we appreciate your time, everybody. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and stop recording, and we'll get this posted up on uh, YouTube tonight. And again, um, Desiree, thank you for your time. Thanks for brainstorming being a part of this. And